Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today I'm going to talk about, like, you know, the surrealness of, of our no free will reality, because it's, it's like, it's so completely surreal. It's like, you know, I mean, like, it, it's completely sensical, it's completely logical, but, you know, compared to how we view reality, you know, with the free will perspective, you know, it's just like it's exact opposite, and um, and it's just amazing. So, like before we do that, though, let me just go briefly into what we mean when we say we have a free will, which we don't, and um, why we don't briefly, and why why the why this question matters. Basically, you know, if we had a free will, we'd be free. We'd be able to just choose whatever we wanted. We'd be able to do whatever we wanted within, you know logical constraints, um, feel whatever we wanted um, without anything that's not in our control, either taking part in that or, you know, doing it for us completely. And, um, well, the reality is that um, everything has a cause. And it's because everything has a cause that free will is impossible. Because, like, when you think about it, the, the refutation of free will is so simple. It's like, Let's say you can make a decision. There's a cause to that decision, okay, and there's a cause to that cause, and there's a cause to that cause. And these causes are always going back moment by moment into the past. So what happens for anything we do, whether it's a decision, a motion, uh, uh, think a thought, um, feel a feeling, you know, it, these things have to have causes. And so, like, those causes have causes. So what, whatever we do has this causal regression, this causal chain of cause and effect that goes back to before we were born, obviously, before the planet was created. And that's really why free will is impossible. That's the fundamental reason. But, um, all right. <clears throat> and why, why is this important? Because, like, because we're out of our we're out of our minds. I mean, we couldn't be more insane with this. You know, I mean, like, you know, if, if a person, if a person were to tell you, yeah, I think I'm Napoleon, but I understand that we don't have free will, that person is more sane than somebody that, who, 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 like, who believes in free will. You know, because, you know, it's like the belief in free will is completely, completely opposite to the way things are. And, and like, What's very cool is like, you know, it's not our fault. You know, it's like we didn't decide to get this wrong, so we can't blame ourselves. We shouldn't feel bad about it, you know, again. But, all right, so this show is like, you know. Um, so, all right, so by transcending, what, what happens is when, when we hold this free will belief, when we hold ourselves and others accountable for what we do, you know, like, we know we're not perfect. We know we make a lot of mistakes, you know, like, um, I was thinking, I, I brought this up on a show last night. Um, for example, like so many people get married and, and, and like you know, and like you know they're totally in love when they're when they're married to get married, right? Then years later, you know they're not in love anymore, so they decide to like you know they can't be married and stuff. And naturally, if we had a free will, who would decide to like fall out of love? You know, if we had a free will, we could we could fall in love with whomever we wanted to. That's the thing. Um, but anyway, all right. But so the idea is. We don't have a free will, and to the extent that we understand this, we don't blame ourselves for, for all this stuff that, that we do wrong, that we can't but do wrong. It's not that we don't address it. You know, like, for example, if I do something wrong, um, I won't blame myself because I, I know I don't have a free will. But I'm going to say, uh, you know, I, my experience with doing stuff right and wrong is like, you know, the universe, God, call, call it what you will, tends to like reward me, us, when we get things right and, and punish us when we don't. And it could be as simple as like, you know, if I walk across a room, you know, that's not lit and I stub my toe, you know, that's wrong. You know, I should, I should be more careful. So the universe like punishes me by stubbing my toe. If I do something good, the universe will reward me in some way or another. So, so like, you know, Understanding that um, that we don't have a free will doesn't give us license to do whatever we want, regardless. You know, we still have to like, you know, actions have um, have reactions, but we can limit we can limit the the extent and degree of the negative reactions, especially from ourselves and other people, by understanding that free will is an illusion. All right, 
our, our surreal, no free will reality. So we don't have a free will. Uh, nobody has a free will. Nobody has ever had a free will. No one can ever have a free will. Some people, I mean, this is pretty absurd. Some people say that, um, that if you become like an enlightened, advanced being, that if, if you kind of like, I don't know, through meditation, through adopting some kind of philosophy of life or whatever, if you, um, and you can do this. I mean, now you can like synchronize your brain waves so you're, you're functioning kind of like a Buddha or something, that somehow if you do that, you can transcend free will. No, you can't. <laughs> you can never, ever, ever have a free will. Um, never had one, never can, okay? And that's, you know, but the amazing thing, and, and, and also like this, this refers to like human beings, right? But it also refers to every other pl uh, animal on, on the planet. And it's interesting, it's like with other animals, you know, we, we find it easy to, easier to, to accept that about them. Because like with, with animals, I mean, like they do learn from experience, but also they're, they're much more instinctive, instinctual than, than human beings. But anyway, animals don't have a free will either. So like, so the, the, the idea is like, yeah, we're going through, oh, and, and, and besides the animal, Nothing. It's, it doesn't just relate to, to living things. Particles, um, light, um, trees, planets, rocks, nothing can do what it wants. Okay, there's, in, in, in the world, <laughs> there are these physical laws, you know, the Newton's laws of motion, there's causality. You know, whatever is happening in, in our reality is governed completely by these laws. There's nothing that can escape these laws. And, and especially with causality, you know, some laws, who knows, maybe some laws aren't as, as ironclad as others, but the, the law of causality, the principle of causality, that everything has a cause, I mean, you know, there, maybe there's a first cause to everything, who knows, but everything after that has to have a cause. So, um, so, so nothing, nothing in our reality is free of this causality. So what's that mean? That means that our entire reality is this giant movie. You know, the entire universe is, is a movie that's going from, from state to state to state, moment by moment by moment. And like right now, you know, I mean, who knows how old, I mean, yeah, theoretically, like the universe is infinite or eternal, whatever. So, but like, you know, this, this, this causal nature of our reality, you know, held a zillion years ago and will hold a zillion years from now, okay? That's the way things are, the, that's the way things have to be, okay? And I mean, it's, it's surreal because like, because of our conditioning, we've been taught that, um, that somehow, through some kind of like, I don't know, um, we're, we're taught that, that, that what we do is up to us. And that's the surreal thing, you know, like nothing, Nothing we do is up to us. I'm trying to like, this is a hard show to do. Like the, the other, I just did a show on quantum mechanics which was pretty difficult because it gets into the physics and stuff. And this is hard because like, it's, you know, you try to, um, try to kind of like come to terms with and, and grasp the nature of reality as it is. That we human beings are like actors. You know, we're on this planet, we're going about, we're doing what we do, and nothing that we do is up to us. We're like, you know, we're, we're like actors, but like, at least with an actor, you know, in our conventional understanding, they get to interpret their roles somehow, you know, how they're going to say their lines, how they're going to move and stuff, you know. Not, they don't have a free will either, but, but like, with, with our reality, with the fundamental, fundamental nature of our human reality, we don't get to choose anything. Every, everything that we do, everything we have done, everything we will do, had to have happened, and, and, and none of it was up to us, okay? None of it was up to us. Okay, so, um, and that's amazing. I mean, think about it, think about it. Like, think how if, if like, when God willing, because like, I can't say that, the, you know, it seems like the universe God is finally compelling us, making us get this question right, because it's made us get us wrong. It, it made us like, you know, for decades, for centuries, believe that stuff was up to us. And, and like, so now it's, so think, think about like our world, how our world would change if everyone 
fully, completely understood that free will is an illusion. Free will is impossible, that everything we do is completely determined. We're, we're robots, puppets, instruments of God. You know, we manifest God's will. However you want to phrase it, that nothing is up to us. It, it, it'll be a fundamentally, categorically different world. I mean, because like, you know, again, I... Um, with the free will perspective, if we do something good, whoa, I'm great, you know, like, you know, isn't that, you know, it, it, it creates conceit, arrogance, pride, you know, it's just like, it, it, it pits us against each other, it has us compare ourselves with others, you know, in a favorable light, you know, and not favorable toward them and stuff. When we do wrong, we're not, you know, we're not perfect creatures. I mean, who would, who would deny that? We do wrong all the time. I mean, not all the time, maybe, but we do a lot of wrong. And... Under the free will perspective, we'll blame ourselves and we'll blame each other. So, like, if and when, God willing, when um, soon, everybody understands that free will is an illusion, we're not going to blame each other. Like, you know, things will go wrong. Like, the last episode, the clock wasn't working, right? So, like, you know, I had to address it. I had to address it. I said, hey, the clock's not working and stuff. But, like, under the free will perspective, I would, I, I might you know, have the, the tendency or the urge or whatever to kind of like blame or hold responsible, you know, who's ever, you know, um, doing, you know, controlling the clock or whatever, whoever said it all. But like, all right, when you understand that nobody has free will, you, you don't do that. And so like, you don't blame others for anything. You don't blame yourself for anything, but you address it. So I, you know, I, 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 I you know, I alerted my, my director to the, to the clock thing. So again, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is like, understanding that you don't have free will doesn't mean that you don't address stuff when it goes wrong and that you don't, like for example, when, when I do something that's good, that like doing the show, all right, perfect example. I'm breaking history. Nothing has ever been presented as a kind of like a, a truth of reality that's greater than this, okay? Um, Newton and his laws, you know, like, I start every show with this, like, John Searle, uh, an American philosopher, he, he just, like, he, he was, like, interviewed by Susan Blackmore, who's another philosopher, in a book called um, Conversations on Consciousness, I believe, and, like, you know, he said, like, you know, this thing, um, the world coming to understand the free will is an illusion is bigger than Einstein, um, Copernicus, Newton, Galileo, Darwin. I mean, it's the biggest thing that ever has happened because, because like our perception of reality is so integral to our experience of reality and the, 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 um, the wrongful conclusion or the understanding of human will is so fundamental to this reality. In other words, like if we're, if we, if we miss, if we get wrong, and again, it's not our fault, you know, because we don't have free will, but, you know, the universe makes us get this wrong, it's, it's creating a, um, a mistaken view of, of who we are, of what, what is, you know, our reality. It's, it's, it's completely, it's, it's insane. I mean, it's, you know, there are different, there are various kinds of, like, definitions for sanity and, and insanity but I think just for us to um, to believe that we're the authors of our thoughts when we're not the authors of our actions I mean that you, you can't be more insane than that pretty well. maybe you can but I don't know but it's just like it's really really you know our yeah our, our perception of reality and and this is it's not inconsequential because think about it think about how we react to ourselves and others under this free will perspective you know and think how we think how we would react getting it right okay um so like so it's very very surreal it's very amazing it's like mind-boggling that that one nothing is up to us you know and two that almost all of us think that some things that everything is up to us okay so that's that's major that's huge but it doesn't stop there because um then then we ask ourselves, well how about god you know like we would say well god certainly has a free will right isn't god all powerful 
you know, but, but no, when, when you think about it, even God doesn't have a free will. God has to be God. Is God. If God is omniscient, you know, I mean, it depends how you define God, but like most of us define God as knowing everything. And, and you, know, I, you know, I use the word God because I kind of equate God with the universe. It's kind of like a scientific theism that, you know, it's not like the biblical prophetic God that, you know, that, you know, of the Bible, you know, the, that, that resides in heaven, has got angels. So this is kind of like a scientific, I mean, you can apply it to that God also, but the idea is like God, the creator, the governor of the universe doesn't have a free will either. If God, is, if God knows everything, God has to know everything. God can't just decide to not know something. If God is all good, as some of us believe, um, God would have to be all good. Um, if God is, if God is the creator, God has to create, <laughs> you know? So, so, I mean, like, <laughs> this, this no free will reality um, involves everything. It involves, we people, it involves all the animals on the planet, it involves every tree, every mountain, every, everything, and it also involves God. So, that's, so nothing, you know, so everything is happening is a movie. Everything is happening is completely dependent on what happened before, which is completely dependent on what happened before. And, I mean, this is important because this is not the way we view reality. All right? Um, so, so, all right. Um, so basically, what I was trying to say before is nothing can escape causality. Everything has a cause that, that relates to our decisions, and it also relates to, to like how light works, how water works, how planets travel, everything. Everything is causal, and, and nothing is free of causality. Um, so, and that's surreal. I mean, but it's logical. I mean, it has to be that way. Um, another surreal part of this is that... <clears throat> You know, you got to ask yourself, well, why? Why did the universe get us, have us get this wrong? And, and you know, it's interesting because, like, all right, we haven't had this wrong for all that much time. Because I'm, I'm guessing that, let's say, 4,000 years ago, I don't think ever, anybody ever asked themselves, 5,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago, I don't think ever, anybody, you know, just, like, considered the question, you know, do I have a free will and, and stuff? which I'll, I'll get into actually how we got into this, um, at least in the West, this, this conception that we have free will. Um, in the West of St. Augustine, I think writing around 500 A.D., he's grappling with the question of evil because like his understanding is God is all good. Okay, God is good. You know, that's like the basic Christian premise, basic Judeo-Christian premise. And so he's like, well, if God is all good, when we do something wrong, it's got to be up to us. Okay, so he writes this book, De, Li De Libro um, Arbitrero, which is translated, it's Latin for on free will. And so all of a sudden, free will becomes a, um, a part of Christian doctrine. I think, I'm not sure what the, the derivation or the origin is in the, uh, in, um, in the Old Testament, in the, the Jewish scriptures. And you know, then it has its counterparts in the, in the, um, the East, the Eastern religions, you know, um, Hinduism and, and, and Buddhism and all, which Buddhism does accept cause and effect. But anyway, uh, um, so like, you know, so like, you know, so we get this, so like, you know, 500 A.D., what's like, that's like um, 1,500 years ago. So, it, you know, within the timeline of this eternity, it's not like... It's not like beings, human beings, life forms, or whatever, have, have for eons had this, um, this illusion of free will. It's like, you know, for, for eons, you know, I would suspect, I would guess that, that nobody, no living thing, whatever, human beings, whatever, animals, dinosaurs, whatever, thought about this. Then, then like the universe, kind of like at, at a moment, just like gets us to like, you know, mistakenly can conclude that we have a free will. And you got to ask yourself, well, why would the universe do that? Why would the universe make us get something so fundamental to our reality wrong? I don't know. I have no idea, but it's kind of like, that's kind of like asking, well, why would the universe, like, the only thing that I, the only thing that I find wrong with reality is pain. 
because I'm a hedonic creature. We're all hedonic creatures. We seek pleasure, we avoid pain. So anything that's like pleasant, we've got no problem with, you know. But if, but if it causes pain, there's, there's got to be a problem. So the problem with this um, belief in free will is that it causes unnecessary pain. I mean, um, to the extent we get this right, we can create a, a more compassionate, kinder, intelligent world. But, so the universe makes us get this wrong, you know, and now, now it's, it's becoming very clear that the universe, for whatever reason, who, who knows what, you know, God or the universe, why God or the universe does what it does. You know, it's completely compelled. God doesn't have a free will either, remember. But, um, but apparently, you know, it's time for us to get this right. And, you know, this is a very good time for us to get this right. You know why? Because, like, we're moving into this Occupy revolution of, of the 99% against the 1% who have way too much money and power. And with that money and power, they're just, like, they're destroying the climate. They're destroying the quality of life for, for several billion people. You know, they're just, like, it creates, it's, ah. Uh. And so, like, what happens is, like, all right, yeah, um, this is very important to that question because, like, our world is going to change fundamentally over this next year. I mean, like, this Occupy, you know, here in the United States, um, it'll start, you know, ramping up again in the spring through the summer and fall. And by the fall, we may not have, this country may not exist, you know, as, as it is now with our Senate and House where, like, you know, where basically both parties recruit millionaires to run for office because it costs so much to run campaigns and they want candidates who can fund their own campaigns. So you got millionaires on both sides of the aisle running the country. I don't think this paradigm is going to last that because, because, again, we have to deal with climate change. We have to deal with so many problems that this kind of political system just won't allow. So what happens is like, this is a very, very opportune time for us to get this um, question of free will right, that we don't have a free will, because um, to the extent that, like, all right, we're, we, the 99%, are going to have to take all of the extra money and power from the 1%, because, we're gonna, you know, it's, it's a pragmatic, necessary kind of thing that has to happen. But... If we, if we do this under the free will perspective, we're going to do this with a sense of blame. We're going to say, well, the 1% are evil. They deserve to be punished, you know, all this stuff. And naturally, the 1% is going to, like, you know, feel the same way toward the 99% who's, like, taking all their money and power or most of it, whatever. And so, like, this, this, the, the notion of free will in this era, in this political and this is global. This is just, in, you know, it started with Arab Spring, but now it's like spread to the entire world. Um, to the extent we can navigate this major geopolitical transition, getting the nature of free will, of human will, right, we're going to do it without blame. We're going to, you know, in other words, like, we're going to say to the 1%, yes, we have to take your money, we have to take your power, but it's not your fault. We're not going to be angry with you. Um, we're not going to, like, aggress against you. I mean, like, you know, God willing, of course, because, again, we don't have the free will to decide. We have to see how everything's going to transpire. But, yeah, in terms of, like, you know, this is a very opportune time to, to get this nature um, of human will right because it will allow this transition to a more equal, fair, sustainable world to happen in the most peaceful um, kind, compassionate way possible. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, and all right. So yeah. So like, um, I'm guessing. I'm guessing that um, because um, because of this show and because of the meetup that I created in January of 2010, and because of my, my Manhattan show with, with The Messenger, it's actually The Messenger show I co-hosted, Myth of Free Will, and now Sam Harris, who's like this best-selling, three-time best-selling um, New York Times author, he's um, a neuroscientist, he just came out with a book refuting free will. So it seems, it seems quite clear that, um, that people are, are going to get this. I mean, but the, the thing I'm trying to say is like, you know, it's just a guess. It's, it's kind of like it's a prediction based on, on available evidence. Um, because we don't have a free will, we can't say for sure what's going to happen, you know, either with the Occupy or with this human will thing and stuff. But it, it does seem like it's going um, to, you know, 
happened. And um, and what else? <laughs> um, all right. So what does it mean? I mean, like, you know. So what does what does it mean to be a person? I mean, like, again, our definition of of who we are is like, yeah, we do things of our own, you know, and and we we're we're, we're accountable. We you know, we just decide, we, we make things happen, you know, of our own free will. Um, now we, we're, we're faced with the reality of the no. We're like robots, puppets, you know, computers, programmed. We're like, you know, nothing is up to us. So how do we see ourselves? Um, I think one, we see ourselves as innocent, first of all. We don't blame ourselves for anything. And... And I think maybe we can like, you know how like sometimes like it's good to kind of like be at one with God, be at one with the universe? Well, I think that's what it does. It, it, first, it makes us all equal. Nobody's any better or worse than anyone else. Because like, you know, if we're not accountable for anything we do, if we're just like the objects of what, you know, if we're made to do whatever we do, then certainly we're just like, <clears throat> we're just beings that, um, <clears throat> that you know, this, this kind of like, this comparative um, description doesn't apply. You know, because we're, we're, again, we're not the, uh, the subject, we're the object, we're being moved. Um, but so, yeah, what does it mean to be a person? It, it's, it's, that's the surreal thing, because, like, you know, to go from, like, believing that we have free will to understanding we don't, how do we see ourselves in each other? Um, my, you know, I would suggest we just focus on, on just, like, all right, the show I did before this was like the happiness show, and it just focused on, on the theme that happiness is really our basic goal in life. So we accept we don't have a free will, we focus on happiness, we don't blame each other, we don't blame ourselves, we don't take uh, wrongful credit for what's not up to us, and, um, and we see ourselves at one with God. We see ourselves as manifesting God's will. We see ourselves as manifesting the universal will. And, um, and you know, it's a, it's a real reality. I, to be honest, I'm just coming to terms with it in a very kind of like a spiritual sense because I can understand it logically and all, but it, it goes far beyond this. All right, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. In the future, we're going to explore why we don't have free will and why it matters in a lot of other ways. Thanks for watching.